So excited to be here. Uh, how many of you guys have seen uh, Thou Shalt Laugh one, two, or three? Yes, a lot of you guys. Yeah. Those of you who haven't, you you don't. This will still make sense. You don't have to see one, two, and three. Uh, my job is just to sort of stay out of the way, but to make sure that the uh, that the comedians get uh, get introduced and make sure that we keep everything in order. So I am your your master of ceremonies. Normally in a concert venue like this, I'm playing a piano, so I feel a little weird. But uh, maybe we can get one out here, get out here later. Uh, one of my, uh, just to look at it. <laughs> um, the cool thing for me today is that I had an opportunity to hang out with the, uh, with the comedians all day. And you, you really do uh, have an enormous opportunity here to meet some very, very funny people. And oddly enough, it's all clean comedy. How about that? Yeah, when does that ever, when does that ever happen? The, uh, <laughs> The fun thing for me today, too, is that, is that I found out that I have a lot of things in common with these new comedians that, uh, that I met. A lot of the guys backstage were uh, actually in the marching band, like I was in junior high and high school. For example, Michael Jr., who you, you will meet soon, he, he played tuba, and uh, Taylor Mason played, uh, played saxophone. Show of hands, how many people were in the marching band when you were in junior high and high school? Yeah? Okay, hold them up, keep them up there. Look around, those are the people who never had a date while they were doing that. Also, in junior high school, right at the same time that I was a geeky kid in the band, I also had uh, really bad acne. But, but, but I, I, I didn't have like the all, the all over the face acne, I had acne. I had one acne, like right, <laughs> right in the middle of my forehead. It was like a horn that filled up once a month. <laughs> so I smelled of clearasil, and I was also hideously thin. And, and my feeling is that my parents, they, they got together and they had a meeting and they said, listen, this kid is never going to date looking like this and smelling like this. This is probably a good time to finish him off. Let's just put braces on his teeth and just do that. <laughs> and, and so you can't open your mouth with this, all this, this hardware in your mouth. So on the off chance, for me, in junior high school, on the off chance that, that a cheerleader would wander off from the herd, from her area of the school into my area with the overhead projectors, <laughs> and if I tried to smile at her with those rubber bands in, it would be like... <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Welcome to SeaWorld, the Dolphin Show is next. Now, my parents were also very frugal. My mom sent me to school with a bologna sandwich in a bag with, with potato chips. Now, those of you who had braces, what happens when you put a bologna sandwich into a mouthful of barbed wire? What happens? Well, if you have the sandwich on a Monday, <laughs> by Thursday, you can still reach back with your tongue to a molar for a little snack. So my special skill in junior high school, with a mouth fully loaded with bologna after, after lunch, if I reached for a high C on Rachmaninoff's Prelude in C sharp minor, I could blow half a bologna sandwich into the flute section, no problem. <laughs> that's not the comedy, that's just therapy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the house, Rex Havens. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you very much. And let me say from the heart, thank you for what you do. Because what all you fine people do makes the world go round. You work hard with your brains and your sweat. You go to work every day. Your families and your communities are better off for what you do because what you do is important. And that is where you and I differ. <laughs> because I'm a comedian, and it is one of the dumbest wastes of human energy ever invented. <laughs> I don't have to kid myself about that. We don't do anything terribly valuable like you do. We stare at the world, and we try to figure out things which, I'm going to be honest with you, we're never going to figure out. Things we say I don't understand. Spit an image, where'd that come from? 
Spitting image. Look at him there, Jim. He's the spitting image of him there. Did anybody ever walk up to somebody and say, you know, you look a lot like Bob? <laughs> I don't think they should be allowed to call that show Survivor unless some of them don't. Am I the only person that's nervous checking into a hospital with the word memorial in the name? <laughs> Can't figure out anything. Can't figure out the names of the cars. There's a lot of cars that don't even have a name. They have a number. Why is that? It only makes sense if you're trying to get the biggest number. Give an example. Mazda's got a 323, 626, 929. Pontiac had a 1,000. Audi has a 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Pontiac had a 6,000. Saab has a 9,000. Nissan just said to heck with it. Now they make an infinity. Top that. <laughs> Chrysler Mitsubishi's a little nuts. They got a vision, an eclipse, and a mirage. <laughs> a vision, which is really something to look at. An eclipse, that's something you're not supposed to look at. Mirage, something you're not even really looking at. <laughs> and they got cars named for the heart of the big city all the way on out to the sticks. For the inner city, metro. A little further out, suburban. Further out still, town car. Got one that can't decide, town and country. <laughs> Further out still, villager. Beyond civilization, the Yukon and the outback. And way the heck out there, Mercury and Saturn. All those things we can't figure out. I always wonder, can the cars do what their names sound like they can do? And if they can, then apparently they can do a wide range of things. Get one that does what you need doing. If you're going someplace and there are no roads, get a Pathfinder or a Trailblazer. <laughs> if nobody's ever been where you're going, you're going to need a Discovery or an Explorer. <laughs> if you're a little bit lonely, I say get yourself an Escort. Or maybe an amigo or a sidekick, you know, shop around, shop around, shop around a little bit, you know. Plymouth made a Reliant. I had one. They call it that because it made you reliant on public transportation, by golly. <laughs> get the car based on the kind of trip you want to take. If you want to take a short trip, get a sprint. Slightly longer trip, get a journey. Want to take a hopeful trip, get a quest. A long, hard trip, get an expedition or an excursion. And if you want to stay away for years, get an odyssey. <laughs> but get the car that fits your mood. If you want to be daring, get an intrepid. If you want to be a gentleman, get a gallant. If you want to go overseas, get a passport. If you can't concentrate, get a focus. <laughs> if you got a score to settle, get an Avenger. If your batteries are low, get a charger. And if you're in a bad marriage, for goodness sakes, get an escape. <laughs> that brings us to men and women. I think that's why they were kind enough to invite us here. I'm glad so. I mean, men and women is the biggest mystery in life we will never understand. I'm glad so many women are here. I'd like to speak first to the women. Now, I can only speak as a man. It is the handicap I was born with. <laughs> I only know two things about men and women that are always true. My whole stupid life, only two things. It comes down to two things. Number one, I'm a man. Number two, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if anybody honestly today still thinks it's a man's world, you owe it to yourself to have a wedding. On the wedding day, my young unmarried male friends, that's the day you will find out what a very tiny piece of that day's puzzle you are. <laughs> a lot of young grooms make a mistake. They go into the wedding, they're thinking, wow, son of a gun, beautiful hall, beautiful church. I'm half of the happy couple. Surely this day must be a little bit about me. No, not your day. <laughs> not her day, not your day, all her day. Not a, she doesn't even really want you there. She'd get married without you if she could. <laughs> she may love you and want to be your wife, but if she could have that beautiful day and just leave you at home on the Lazy Boy, she'd do it every time. Because you're a man, that means in our bride's eyes, we're an accident waiting to happen. 
You're not going to get to make any big decisions about the day, colors, fabrics, flowers. She'd like to let you, but you're too stupid. <laughs> and I have no problem with that. The average woman has a better sense of the artistic, don't you think, than the average man? I got married. I found out my beautiful wife, Sarah, wanted us to have checks for the checkbook that were, get this, pretty. <laughs> I'm a man. I just wanted checks that would clear. Sarah told me we're going to divide the checkbook. I got the deposit slips. <laughs> wedding day, fellas, her day. I'm not saying it's a lost cause when it comes to the marriage, but the wedding day, bride's day, understand it, know it going in, and it will go better for you. Everything's about the bride as it always has been. Her dress costs hundreds, maybe thousands. There's five separate fittings after the ceremony. Her dress is carefully, lovingly cleaned, pressed, folded, sealed, wrapped in plastic, saved and preserved as an altar and shrine <laughs> for life. The groom's clothing is rented. <laughs> <sighs> and has to be back to the shop on Monday because another guy needs it next weekend. <laughs> Don't let it bother you, young men, that 500 other guys got married in your suit. <laughs> You're still special. <laughs> 50 years from now, she can hold up that gown with a tear in her eye and say, I got married in that. If the groom can do that, he'll be holding underwear. So my advice to make it special, you take that underwear home, you stick it on the wall with a nail, 30 years later, you give it to your son to get married in. Oh, yeah. Point to it every now and then and say, someday you're gonna fill those out and make me proud, boy. <laughs> the ring, the woman's ring is incredible, thousands of dollars, this is a man's ring. 8250. <laughs> Most stores throw this in when you buy hers. Because diamonds are a girl's, man's best friend's a dog. <laughs> Who thought that up? Women thought that up. Because they're smarter than us, they beat us on that one. Woman's best friend's one of the rarest things on the planet. Man's best friend is so plentiful, we neuter him because we don't want more. <laughs> if you want to be a good husband, fellas, and I know you do, there's seven things you need to learn to say to a good woman if you want to keep her for a good long time. They're not easy, but they're important. Ladies, if there's any truth, support me so they learn, okay? Are you ready, guys? This is tough. Number one, honey. Okay, you were right. I was wrong. <laughs> Number two, I'm sorry, and that won't happen again. <laughs> Number three, how could I have been so stupid? <laughs> I don't deserve you, sweetheart. <laughs> I would marry you all over again. No, you're much prettier than she is. <laughs> and no, if anything, that dress makes your hips look too small. You should eat something, honey. You're about to blow away, I swear. I don't know. <laughs> All studies say men and women equally intelligent, but I believe women have figured out how to use more of their brains. I don't know how you do it, but you do. I know my wife makes more decisions before 7 in the morning than I have to make all day. I found this out the first time I went shopping for women's shoes with my new wife, and that's when I found out that women don't just have shoes. Men just have shoes. If it goes at the end of my leg, it's called a shoe. That's the only name for it. Women don't have a single pair of shoes. They have subcategories for every change in footwear. Women have pumps and clogs and flats and slings and heels and open-toed and mules and spikes and flip-flops and strappy sandals and scrunchy boots and stilettos and wedges and T-straps and don't forget espadrilles. <laughs> Men have no idea what these are. It's a code they use to keep us out of the conversation. A man doesn't know a pump from a flat. All a man knows is when you got a flat, you need a pump. <laughs> and the colors women know. How do you learn them all? But you do. You know every color ever invented. 
My wife's shoe catalog, unbelievable. I bet every woman here knows what color periwinkle is, right? What color is it? Blue, purple, yeah, look at the men. How'd they know that? How'd they know that? Because men only know the eight colors from the big fat crayon box from first grade. That's all we know. We've lost six of those. We're down to black and brown, we understand. But my wife's catalog, unbelievable. I never saw a variety like this, unbelievable. I saw exotic colors like aspen, mauve, ecru, taupe, sea breeze, eggshell, crimson, indigo, khaki, beige, honeysuckle, ivory, lavender, sandstone, heather, mist, teal, satin, flax, coral, cream, nugget, pearl, saddle, daisy, black, ebony, charcoal, raven, midnight, parsley, persimmon, pineapple, periwinkle, papaya, peach, purple, pink, poppy, pixie, powder, pewter, peapot, pansy, pumpkin, pewts, pomegranate, peppermint, pancake, pumpernickel, champagne, and toast. On the other hand, men's shoes, black and brown. Sadly for men, one choice too many. Because we still got to turn to the wife and go, honey, which one should I wear here tonight? Help me out. I got black and brown. I can't make a call. God bless you, folks. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for the laughs. You are just great. Thanks a million. Well, it's fun so far, right? It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did any of you guys uh, hear our radio show that we do, Music and Intelligence for Your Life? It's, uh, yeah, we, um, it's, it's what I started doing after I left Entertainment Tonight. It is basically uh, Music and Intelligence for Your Life, all the information you need to be the smartest person in the room or just impress your friends at the water cooler next time you are there. If it doesn't move you forward in your life, or if it doesn't cause you to make a big difference in somebody else's life, you won't hear it on the show. And it's basically just all kinds of tidbits that you can either impress your teacher with or uh, used to be germ-free. I've become a, a germaphobe. But some of the stuff we have on the show, uh, little things that you can use with your friends, like what has more calories, a muffin or a bagel? What do you think? Bagel is wrong. Muffin, 600 calories. Bagel, 300 calories. What's the germiest thing in a hotel room? The sheets, yes, the remote, the TV remote. It, it, yeah, it never gets cleaned. Don't ever touch the TV remote again. <laughs> Work it with your feet, like I do. <laughs> so we also have on the show all kinds of advice uh, about, about teenagers, because we have a lot of teen listeners. And, and uh, there's this new uh, uh, company, new institute. It's called the, the Teenage Research Institute. Have you heard about this thing? True story. Apparently, you teens are so much of a problem now, they've opened an institute. <laughs> Fascinating thing on the teenage, from the Teenage Research Institute that I applied to my life. I have a 15-year-old daughter. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a piece about what to do as a parent when your child, when your teenager, teenage daughter, comes out of her bedroom in the morning dressed inappropriately on the way to school. What do you do? The advice is this. You as the parent, you walk into your bedroom. You change your clothes. You come out dressed exactly like your daughter. <laughs> which looks great on paper until you've seen me in a tube top and hot pants. <laughs> All right, are you ready for more real comedy? <laughs> Here we go. Please welcome Joe Wong. Hi, everybody. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> I'm an immigrant to this country, and uh, I used to drive a used car with a lot of bumper stickers that are impossible to peel off. <laughs> and one of them said, if you don't speak English, go home. <laughs> And uh, I didn't notice it for two years. <laughs> when I first got my driver's license, I decided to be an organ donor. And I designated my brain 
because it makes me happy to think that some guy wakes up from a coma and goes, "What's the matter? I'm still alive. Who's the guy?" Yeah, that's Chinese. <laughs> it just means, hey, I can't remember who I am now. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, I went to an amusement park, and、uh, toward the end of a scary ride, they took a picture of me screaming like this. <laughs> <laughs> Then they tried to sell it to me. So I bought the picture, <laughs> and I put it on my driver's license. <laughs> Just to keep it real, you know. <laughs> Now I have a driver's license with a picture of a crazy guy in the front, and the back says "brain donor." <laughs> I hate ants, but a friend of mine was like, "Hey, Joe, ants are amazing animals because they can carry up to 20 times their body weight." I'm like, "Big deal! <laughs> I can carry thousands of ants." <laughs> and、uh, I have a friend whose name is Wei Dai, and、uh, he once said to me, "Hey, Joe, let's go to Canada to see some bears." I said, "Well, I'm kind of afraid of bears." He said, "Hey, Joe, you got to remember that bears are more afraid of you than you are of them." I'm like, "Well, I'm pretty sure the bears are wrong." <laughs> And on top of that, I don't want to go near any bears with some guy whose name is We Die. <laughs> I tried really hard to become a U.S. citizen because、uh, I'm a foreigner, I guess. <laughs> And、uh, in order for me to become a U.S. citizen, I had to take these、uh, American history lessons, where they ask us questions like, "Who's Benjamin Franklin?" I'm like, "Ah,、oh. <laughs> the reason our convenience store gets robbed." What's the Second Amendment? We're like, ah,、oh, the reason our convenience store gets robbed. <laughs> What is Roe versus Wade? We're like, ah,、oh, two ways of coming to the United States. I'm married now, but、uh, I used to be really scared about marriage. I was like, "Wow, 50% of all marriages end up lasting forever." <laughs> My wife loves shopping. A lot of times, she comes home and go, "Hey, Jill, guess how much is this dress?" I can never guess the right answer, because the correct answer is a story. <laughs> She's like, "Well, I set my eyes on it two weeks ago. Then I waited until the big sale." Then I got another store credit card. 
I already had one, because, but uh, I used your name and social security number. <laughs> You're now a Victoria's Secret Angel now. <laughs> I'm a father now, and uh, here's the thing. I came from a long line of people who had kids. <laughs> oh, you too? Okay. <laughs> but still, I was really amazed by the birth of my son, you know? I was in that delivery room holding on my son, thinking to myself, wow, he was just born, and uh, he's already a U.S. citizen. So I said to him, uh, do you even know who's Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> he peed all over me. <laughs> You see, basically in this country, they say that uh, two wrongs don't make a right, but uh, two illegals can make legal. <laughs> My son is two now, and he's really cute, but uh, when he was first born, he was ugly. And uh, I wasn't prepared for it, you know? <laughs> I was uh, looking at my son, I was uh, trying to remember all my ugly relatives. <laughs> I was trying to find out exactly who passed the ugly gene to my son, you know? <laughs> and the doctor came in, he was like, wow, congratulations. He looks just like you. I was like, <sighs> Now I have a sign on my car that says, baby on board. That sign is basically a threat. It just says, uh, I have a screaming baby and nagging wife, and I'm not afraid of dying anymore. <laughs> I grew up in China, then I stayed in Texas for seven and a half years. Oh. And that's why I decided to stick with the Chinese accent. <laughs> I tried Texas accent before, you know? When I invite people to dinner, I was like, y'all come on down. <laughs> We're fixing to have some fly lice. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> I tried really hard to fit in, you know. I was wearing a big bell buckle a cowboy hat, <laughs> and a mustache. <laughs> I ended up looking like a Mexican. I was like, howdy, partner. He goes, hola. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, toward the end of last year, I became a US citizen, which I'm really happy about. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> China is a great country, but uh, I don't want to live there anymore, because in China, 
I can't do the thing I do best here, being ethnic. <laughs> yeah, this country is getting more diverse now. You know, we have a president who's half black, half white. Just gives me a lot of hope. Because I'm half not black, half not white. <laughs> and uh, come to think of it, if you rearrange some of the African American names, you get a Chinese name. <laughs> like Moesha Shai Mo, <laughs> Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> So uh, one night I was uh, walking alone on the street, and all of a sudden, I found myself walking right behind this woman, and she turned around and said to me, I would amaze you if you're black. <laughs> so I snatched the purse. <laughs> because uh, we deserve some respect, too. <laughs> All right, that's about my time. Thank you guys very much. Have a great evening. Back to your host, John Tesh. Thank you. Oh, you guys are a great audience. Thank you so much. I feel like it's time for me to get uh, really personal with you um, because we've known each other for about 12 minutes now. <laughs> and you know, guys, how it is when, uh, no matter what skills you have, whether you're a Navy SEAL or you're in special ops or you're former host of Entertainment Tonight, uh, your, your wife doesn't believe you have any skills unless you can rewire the whole house for 220 and dig a basement in one afternoon. Am I, am I right? And my wife's like, what? I'm sorry, what is it you do again? You do the piano thing, and uh, what's that, reading the celebrity birthdays on TV? What is that? What is that? So one day, she said the magic words to me, Connie did. She said, John, I need you. I have something for you to do. And I'm like, what is it, Connie? You want me to compose a symphony? You want me to lift something really heavy? And she said, no, I want you to go online, and I want you to order me some bras. I'm out of bras. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not the bra ordering guy. I'm not ordering you bras. So once I had got on ladygrace.com, <laughs> and I found her style, which was the Lady Grace Dominique Le Mystere, I put in, I put in her dimensions. <laughs> You're not getting her dimensions, sir. It's just not going to happen. This is not that kind of show. So I said, okay, whatever, so I gotta get this done. So I put in John Tesh, I fill out the whole thing. I click order again, another screen pops up, and it says, dear John Tesh, you may not order on ladygrace.com until you become a member of the Lady Grace Bra Club. <laughs> so I push the order button, and it finally goes through mercifully, uh, and then two weeks later, this wonderful box with my name all over it, and Lady Grace Bra Club comes to our house and I pass out the bras and it's just fantastic and everything is wonderful and I've done my job uh, until a couple of days after that when the emails started coming. <laughs> Dear John Tesh, you may also like the Demi Cup. <laughs> and my, my, my biggest fear is that I'm gonna be up on the stage doing something like this with, with you, and I'm gonna have, something's gonna happen, it's gonna be my time, and I'm gonna drop dead, and when the police start going through my stuff, they're gonna find all my bra activity in my Blackberry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, master of comedy and magic, Mr. Dana Daniels. Let's give a nice round of applause for Luigi, the psychic parrot.
many people here believe in ESP? Raise your hand. Let's, uh... Oh, perfect. Wow. What a dream show this is going to be. <laughs> well, we're going to prove it. Uh, he can read people's minds. We're going to have him read the mind of a lady in the audience. Going to need a lady volunteer. A woman like to have their mind read by a bird. <laughs> See a lot of people pointing at other people. <laughs> there we go. We'll find someone out here. Here we go. I'm... I'm thinking, I'm thinking right over here. How about you on the end? You want to give her? Yeah, yeah. Come, you have to come up on stage. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Bring her up here. <laughs> right over here. Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name's Elena. And you're from where? Alice <laughs> Great. <laughs> what was the name again? Al. What? Alice, Alice, now we're going to have Luigi read your mind. I'm going to turn him around so he can't see you. <laughs> A little closer. Stand right over here. Okay, not too close. I don't want to see him kill again. <laughs> I'm going to put this in your hand. Hold on to this object in your hand and concentrate on the item. Concentrate. Luigi's going to read your mind and tell us what's in your hand. Luigi, what does she have in her hand? Keys. That's right. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you don't see acts like this in Vegas. <laughs> and you thought this would be stupid. Now, next we're going to have you select a card, Luigi, read your mind, and find the card. Now, these cards right here, they're kind of fun. You, uh, you push on them. A squeak. Give that a try. A little push. Now, just like there you go. Also works better. You have a squeaker in your hand. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Going to riffle my thumb through the card. Say stop anytime. That will be your selection. Here we go. Stop. Take the card. You stop that. And remember it. Make sure he does not see it once again. Turn him around. <laughs> Show the card to the audience. Good. All right. Good. And then place it. Back inside the deck, anywhere, back in the deck, back, anywhere, good. Okay, now what we're gonna do. <laughs> saves a lot of time. <laughs> All right, we'll cut the cards. All right, and now we'll place Luigi in a hypnotic trance. Here we go. He is now in a deep hypnotic state, like Iowa. <laughs> Completely under. Now, concentrate on your card. Concentrate. <laughs> Think of the card. Look him over. Find her car. Find. Right there, so quickly. Yes, he likes that one right there. What is your car? You. You forgot. On television. Let's ask the audience what was the card? You want to go with the audience or you're 50 50? Two of clubs, and look at that, Luigi pick the eight of diamonds. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> it's a bird. <laughs> Pretty close for a bird. I would love to see your pet do better. What? <laughs> she's, she's still here. <laughs> oh, obviously one of you is lying. <laughs> not gonna point any fingers, but... <laughs> I have an idea. We're gonna try this one more time, but this time we're gonna use larger cards. 
Larger squeaker. <laughs> Same jerk. And these are cards that Luigi is well familiar with. These are worms. Cracker. Cat in jail. <laughs> and an airline engine. <laughs> we'll turn them around. Say so stop and that will be your card. Out of cards. <laughs> this one? We'll back it up. Okay. We'll, we'll back it up right here. Boop, boop. This one. All right. All right. Remember. 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 <laughs> Shuffle it back inside the deck. It's a bird. <laughs> All right, well, we'll shuffle it back inside this deck. We have no idea which, which one it could be. All right, Luigi, it's any one of these four cards. Pick any one that comes to your mind. <laughs> any one of the four. Come on, just take it out of there. Which one do you want? Come on, which one? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I like that third one right there. What? <laughs> what was your card? It was the circle with dots. The circle with dots. <laughs> Good thing I'm grading on a curve. <laughs> mean the cracker. Bird. Cracker. That's okay, because he picked the two of clubs. There you go. Ah! <laughs> High five. Hey, you did a great job almost. Um, <laughs> Got a lovely gift for you for coming up here and helping us out. Here's some free hours on AOL. Okay, there you go. All right, that's uh, have a nice hand, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Oh, one thing, one thing. I see that. I got another show tomorrow, so I. Yeah, that's why I stopped working with the psychic cow. Uh, too much paperwork. <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> All right. I got a map of that joke, sir. Here's the setup, punchline, you are here, okay? That's... <laughs> Didn't get that. All right. Just having fun. What's your name? What's that? Dante. Dante. That's a good guy's name. Dante. Yeah, my name's Dana. <laughs> Not a good guy's name. Discovered that growing up. All the kids in school used to tease me. They always said Dana was a girl's name. And I'd go home and talk about my sister. I said, Chuck, <laughs> I, uh, I got Dante here. Tell you what, Dante, I like you. I'm gonna make you a little souvenir, okay? I'm gonna make you a souvenir balloon animal, just for you. The only thing is, I don't blow them up. <laughs> I, I'm an addict. There we go. All right, there's Snoopy on a dirt bike, okay? There we go. Well, uh, at this time, Luigi would like to get someone from the audience. I'd like to get a gentleman this time. Someone has a little bit of cash on them, a little bit of money for this one. There you go. We got someone right here. How about you? You, sir, you got some money on you? No. no. How about the red shirt? You got some cash? Beautiful. Give him a nice round of applause. Bring him on up here. All right. There we go. Check the escalator. That's good. Huh? Right over here, sir. Hi. And uh, what is your name? I'm Juno. Juno. How are you doing, Juno? Nice to meet you. And where are you from, sir? 
Kingsville. Kingsville. Yes, Wonderful. And what do you do? Hey. There you go. And what do you do? Uh, auto parts. You, you, auto parts. Sell auto parts. Sell auto parts. Wonderful. Now, what we're going to do is Luigi's going to do something amazing with your money. Give me the largest bill you have, okay? <laughs> Larger the bill, funnier the trick. Can anybody hear funnier than Juno? <laughs> no? All right. That'll do. 20 it is. All right, put the rest away. There we go. Juno's $20 bill. Now, Juno, you're going to take your 20, you're going to take this pen, and you're going to write your initials on it so we know it's your 20. Come a little closer to me. Come right, stand right here. There you go. And while you're doing that, I'll do some magic. <laughs> 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 Yeah. And then we get to check for spelling errors. Okay, got it, good. <laughs> Juno's $20 bill with his initials clearly marked across the face of it. So now we're gonna fold it up. We're gonna place it in a protective envelope, which I have right here. I'd like to see your left hand, Juno. Okay, left hand and thumb and forefinger like this. There we go, hang on to it. Don't move it, keep it in Luigi's view at all times. We're gonna use his psychic mind to increase the value of your $20 bill. To make that connect, would you like that? Good. Now, to make that connection, we're going to use a special device I have right here, jumper cables. <laughs> First, we hook up the bird. Okay. <laughs> Look at him. He knows what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hook him up directly anymore ever since PETA came to see the show. Uh, do me a favor, I'll put your hand out. I'm going to give a good kung fu grip right there. Okay, I'll concentrate. Luigi, concentrate. A little more cord, a little more cord. There we go. <laughs> did you feel it? Yeah, yeah. You did. That's, that's weird because it's just a toy. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I felt it too. Well, let's see what magic has happened. Open up your hand. You're going to see your $20 bill. It's magically transformed into, whoa, oh, it's bird food. <laughs> Start the car. It's a bird. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Baroque. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get the memo, but we're done. <laughs> uh, now, nah, come over here. I got an idea. Here. Put your porn back in there, Juno. First porn back inside. That's good. Try. <laughs> good thing you're not a pharmacist. <laughs> no, I'll get it. Yeah, we don't want to get your jeans dirty. <laughs> I figured this whole thing out. He's nervous around you. See, look at him. He's, you know, he's, he's nervous around other people. We make him comfortable. Tell, tell you what, remove the glasses. Maybe that's the reflection and all that. Good. All right, keep those off. Let me turn them around just a second, just so we distract him. And quickly, quickly put that on right there. Yeah. Here we go. I just got to make him calm down, reverse the process. Okay? This is good. All right, it's good. It's good. All right. All right. You're right, you did it. Boy, well, you five bucks. Okay, now we're going to turn them around. We're going to do the trance, okay? There we go. You too, look up. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do next. I've never gotten this far before. <laughs> they, they usually say, keep the money. <laughs> I admire, I admire you, you doing this, uh, just in case I uh, anyway, put this right over here. Right here. Mm -hmm. 
for good dedication there. Uh, <laughs> you know, you kind of strike me as a two-ply guy. I'm gonna. Yeah. Now concentrate. Here we go. Over here, Luigi, concentrate. Here we go. Come on. Ow! That must have hurt. Look at that. Wow. There you go. Okay, your turn. Woo, nice try. Tell you what, let's take the egg and crack it open right there. Ooh, look at that. I'll take that from you. Remove the contents out of the egg. Unfold it. And hopefully we got a little bit of money there with some cash. Is that your 20, your initials? That's my 20. That's it right there. Give him a nice hand. Thank you very much. I'm Dana Daniels. Thank you very much. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the Thou Shalt Laugh pioneer comedians, Michael Jr. Thanks, man. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun, this is cool. So, my name is Michael Jr. And I'm gonna do some jokes. <laughs> but they're not gonna start right away. Because <laughs> for me, comedy, comedy is like dating somebody that you really, really like, you know? And um, I don't wanna rush this, you know? <laughs> I used to do that. I used to come out on stage and I would do a joke right away. You know, I would jump right in, you know? But I got hurt, man, so. <laughs> Now let's be honest, you've seen a lot of comedians in your day, I'm sure, right? I bet you had your laughs, you know? <laughs> but did it last? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just want this to be different, that's all. <laughs> so there's a few things I wanna talk about. Hold on, I wanna talk about creepy Christians. <laughs> there's some creepy Christians. I didn't wanna be a Christian for a long time just because they were so creepy, I thought, I thought your voice changed when you become a Christian. <laughs> right, because my friends, they'd be cool, right? We'd just be talking, yo, you see that game? The game was good, right? As soon as they start talking about God, can I tell you about the Lord? <laughs> what happened to your voice? <laughs> or you'd be holding a conversation with a creepy Christian. You'd be holding a conversation with them, and all of a sudden, they just start praying without your permission. They just praying. Yo, that game was good. That game was so good, God. We just thank you for being so holy and so awesome, Lord. We were just, thank you for blessing us. I'm like, are we praying right now? I gotta go. Because you got different types of Christians, right? You got Christians who are cool. We can hang around with them, right? Just some cool people. Then you got Christians who, you know, they might have a little limp and they walk, you know. They got the hat on, but the shoes don't match. You know what I'm saying? Just... And then you got Christians, I'm just gonna put this out there. You ever know somebody that was oversaved? <laughs> like you can't even have a regular conversation with them. He's like, hey man, I'm thirsty. You thirsty? Thirsty for the Lord. Hey, you know what? I lost my keys. Could you help me find my key? You need the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't drive a kingdom. 
I drove a Toyota. I don't know. <laughs> and I know as soon as I said oversaved, some of y'all already had somebody in mind. <laughs> but if you didn't, somebody had you in mind. <laughs> Yo, you might be oversaved and you don't even know it, right? I'm gonna help you out. It's a couple, just a couple indicators to let you know you oversaved. Just a couple indicators. Um, if you don't like to mess around with computers, because they got a cursor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you oversave, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you go over your friend's house and they got a vacuum cleaner and you rebuke it because it's a dirt devil. <laughs> you oversave, man, it's just that simple. This is like a really cool church. When I walked in, I was like, whoa, this is like nice, for real. This is... I remember going to church as an adult, right, for the first time when I started going to church. And I would walk in, and the pastor was like, he said, I want you to pray with your neighbor. And I'm like, well, my neighbor don't go to this church. I don't know if you mean... You want me to call my neighbor on the phone? That's creepy. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> right? Then they explained to me, right? Your neighbor is a person sitting next to you. Listen, I'm brand new at this Christian stuff. I don't, not, I didn't even know you're supposed to pray out loud, let alone with this lady. I don't even know this lady. What am I supposed to pray about? Lord, help these bumps go down on this lady's face. I don't know what to, I don't know what to pray about. I don't know what I'm supposed to pray about, right? She went first. She was praying all good, and she must have been John the Baptist's little sister or something. <laughs> she was like, dear Heavenly Father, you said in your word in the sixth chapter, the third, third verse of the book of Matthew, the 601st word on page 1248. <laughs> Lord, you said, but seek. S is in search. E is in everywhere. E is in excellent. K is in kingdom. You're the Alpha Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. I'm thinking, man, she even know his nicknames. <laughs> now it's my turn to pray, right? But I don't got the spiritual vocabulary to just, but I'm not gonna let her out pray me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, God, first of all, you are good people. You know, you are good, Lord, you are good. You were good to the last drop, Lord. Because, um, Lord, I, I just got to obey my thirst, Lord. You know, because choosy moms choose Jesus. So, Lord, because, you know, as the, as the rocket's red glare, Lord, it gave proof to the night, Lord. I believe I could fly, amen. I had one couple, one time, they tried to tell me that their dog was a Christian. <laughs> How is your dog gonna be, a, first of all, you gotta believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, man. What? <laughs> did he say it? What did he say? <laughs> and I was like, I bet I know what happened. I bet I know what happened. You was probably having a conversation with your dog, right? Because that's probably something that you do. And you were saying to your dog, you was like, Bowser, how's life treating you? And Bowser was like, rough. <laughs> and you somehow took that to mean that he wanted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. That's not what he was saying. And while they're trying to convince me their dog is a Christian, I'm looking and the dog is in the backdrop doing what dogs do, licking on itself. I'm like, yo, man, I'm, I'm not trying to judge you and I'm, but, um, I think your dog might be backsliding, right? I, I'm just... <laughs> Read the Bible a lot. Found out, right, I'm reading the Bible, found out Jesus had a little brother. Anybody know his name? James. That's right. When I read that, I was like, wow, Jesus, your big brother? How much pressure was that? 
How many times did he have to hear, why come you can't be more like Jesus, James? Because <laughs> you know, everybody probably thought that James could do the same thing Jesus could do, but he couldn't. He was just James. He wasn't James Christ. <laughs> Remember the wedding banquet? Jesus turned the water into wine. Everybody was amazed. It was delicious. It was the best at the banquet. But they don't tell you about the next banquet. Jesus left early, they started running out of wine. Everybody looked at James. <laughs> hey man, last time this happened, your brother made some wine, dude. <sighs> you just gonna stand there with your sandals on, you're not gonna make no wine. And you know how little brothers are. They follow their big brother everywhere. So I'm sure everywhere Jesus went, James followed him. If Jesus went there, so did James. I bet one time James almost drowned. It's because Jesus walked on water. Uh, James tried to none of this. So it's like mad cool reading the Bible. I was also reading, I wanted to learn about the blessings of Abraham, right? So I'm reading the Bible, digging into like Genesis 12 through 24, right? The thing that really, I was like amazed about uh, those passages in the Bible was Abraham's household and the obedience of his household. His name used to be Abram, right? And then one day God changed his name to Abraham and told him to go home and circumcise the entire household. Even the servants. Then it said he went home that very same day and did it. It's like, man, that is obedience. Because I don't know if I could have been a servant. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would have had a couple questions first. <laughs> but like, whoa, wait, 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 what happened? <laughs> wait, hold on, you, you changed your name? Well, I don't think I know you then, do I? I don't know you. <laughs> wait, man, listen, we got to have a conversation first. So I'm, look, you know I like working here, right? I'm always on time. When my camel break down one time, you gonna bring that up? <laughs> Could you stop sh sharpening that rock while I'm talking to you? I'm trying to, it's distracting, it's distracting. Okay, listen, I just got one question. What exactly did God say? His words, please. Okay, okay. Circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin. You sure he didn't say your skin? <laughs> Sound the same, man. You better check. Go back up there and check. I just made that go back up there part up. I love what I do. I, I, I figure some stuff out about God, like, right? Like, I didn't figure it out. Like, if somebody asked me to explain God in one minute, I wouldn't be able to do it. But if I was, I, well, this is what I would say. God is like a navigational device in your car. You ever been in a car with a navigational device in it? You punch in the coordinates as to where you want to go, right? It says go 10 blocks and turn left. You go 10 blocks and turn right. It doesn't abandon what you're supposed to do. It recalculates what you need to do to get to where you're supposed to be based upon where you are. The only problem is, is if we keep making the wrong turns, <laughs> but if we keep making the wrong turns, the road conditions are gonna be different. It's gonna be rougher, and we're running out of time. So that would be my break, then I would leave, because I don't got nothing else clever after that. I would just leave after that. Right? <laughs> I, was on a, I was on a plane when I first started doing comedy. I was doing comedy for like maybe three years or something. And I noticed like some weird stuff. I'm always, I'm very observational in my comedy. I saw a dude today that had a comb over. I was like, what? What is a comb over anyway? What's the definition of comb over? It means your combing days are over. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Now I'm at the mall and the girl's wearing the skinny jeans, <laughs> skinny jeans. Read the instructions. <laughs> Read 
You're supposed to be skinny to wear these jeans. Yeah, that's, that's part of it, yeah. Other than that, they're called muffin top jeans. Yeah, that's different, that's different. <laughs> So I'm just starting to do comedy, right? And I'm like maybe two years in it, and I'm on a plane with this, and this dude next to me knows I do comedy. And he said, at what point, since you're a comedian, at what point in your career will you know that you're a professional, right? Because like a police officer get a badge and a gun, right? A doctor get a plaque. What will a comedian get, right? And I was like, man, so I made something up. I was like, as soon as I get paid more than $5,000 for one show, that means I'm a professional, right? I got paid the, the money, still didn't feel it. It was like, that's not it, right? Fast forward a few years later. I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana, doing a show. I get heckled from the back of the room with this guy with more twang than I can explain. <laughs> he said, Michael Jr., I was wondering, why do all black people look alike? Right? And the whole crowd froze. They didn't know how I was going to respond. They didn't know what I was going to do. If I was going to get mad, throw a chair, they didn't know what I was going to I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no idea what I was going to say. When I said these words, I didn't even think them. I was hearing them for the first time when I said them. <laughs> he said, Micah Jr., I was wondering, why do all black people look alike? I was like, we don't all look alike. You just got to cut the eye holes in your sheet a lot bigger. And it was at that moment that I knew I was a professional. <laughs> Thanks a lot, I'm Michael Jr. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. All of us at Thou Shalt Laugh Productions believe that there is undiscovered comedy in this room and beyond this room, everywhere. A comedian just waiting to be discovered. There's comedy in each and every one of us. So we began to dig and dig and dig, and we uncovered some of the most amazing comedy you've ever seen in your life, in your own midst. Think of this as Thou Shalt Laugh Idol. Watch. What's the difference between a boyfriend and a husband? 35 pounds. How do you make a milkshake? You gotta scare it! Where do you find a one-legged dog? Where you left it. What's the difference between broccoli and booger? Kids don't eat broccoli! What do you call a fish with no eye? Who was the best comedian in the Bible? Samson, he brought the house down. So these two muffins are in an oven. And the first muffin says, boy, it's hot in here. And the second muffin says, holy cow, we're talking muffin. So I put this ad online that said, husband wanted. I got 50 responses in the first hour, but they all said, you can have mine. There are two snowmen standing in a field. One says to the other, funny, I smell carrots, too. What do you do when your husband's staggering around the house? You shoot him again. How many people with ADD does it take to screw in a light bulb? Wait, what was I saying? What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. What did the ocean say to, say to the beach? Nothing, it just waved. What's the difference between a Harley Davidson motorcycle and a Hoover vacuum cleaner? The position of the dirt bag. How do you get 50 old ladies to curse? Yell bingo! Let's get to the comedy and, and a guy that uh, I've known for years actually. Please welcome Mr. Isaac Witte.
Tesh, everybody. That's John Tesh right there. How about that? Wow. Right there. Good to be here. Wow. Good to be here. I'm excited. I've been doing some traveling. You guys, uh, let me give you guys a tip. If you ever go uh, to the Middle East, uh, Israel, Egypt, any place like that, don't make the mistake I did. Don't use those maps in the back of your Bible to get around. <laughs> those are way out of date. <laughs> I went to church recently, a little disturbing this time, though, because the greeter there at the front door, you know, the guy who shakes people's hands when you walk in, only had uh, <laughs> uh, two fingers. <laughs> like, yeah, a little disturbing, I agree. <laughs> right, like, if you're going to greet at church... <laughs> You just got to have your fingers. <laughs> like, you should have nearly all of them. <laughs> like, four, maybe. <laughs> Three, only if no one else is available. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> it, was, it was like this. <laughs> and I shook it. That's the bad part. <laughs> yeah. I think back on it, I shouldn't have shook it at all, right? When he gave me this, I should have, <laughs> like, gone with the rock. <laughs> right. Because then I would have won. <laughs> this means... <laughs> I, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is my apartment is haunted. Yeah. Yeah, good news is she's good looking. <laughs> <laughs> she's all like, ooh. And I'm like, ah. Mm. She's pretty. <laughs> Check that, I'm bald. Pretty sweet, huh? It's pretty nice seeing my own head that big, bald like that. <laughs> no, I'm bald. Balding, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. I'm balding. I like to say balding because it, it sounds more productive. <laughs> it's like I'm always up to something. <laughs> I don't like to say that I'm losing my hair. That, that makes it sound like had I been more responsible, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> you know, I was like, where's your hair? <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> you know me, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> My mom always tried to make birthdays special for me. You know, I was a kid, like one year, she put a life-size inflatable clown in my room. <laughs> yeah, to be neat when I woke up. Now, let me just tell you guys that <laughs> you don't know fear <laughs> until you wake up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. <laughs> and there in the darkness is what appears to be a man in a clown outfit <laughs> watching you while you sleep. Right, like my knees buckled immediately <laughs> out of fear. What, what made it even more scary is he didn't even move. <laughs> <laughs> he just stayed focused. <laughs> he was like, happy birthday. <laughs> I was a homeschool kid. Uh, briefly, I went back to public school. I decided I liked public school more because in public school when you get the answer wrong the teacher doesn't cry because her son is stupid <laughs> <laughs> a 
I'm not very smart. I'm not like, I, I've been known to lose Connect Four in four moves. <laughs> I went to a Greek restaurant, I said, I said, how do you pronounce it, Yairo or Yiro? He said, either. I said, don't you mean either? Mm. 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 I go to a coffee shop in my neighborhood. The coffee shop I go to, they don't just sell coffee, they also sell carrot cake. Right. If you see the sign above the carrot cake, it doesn't just say carrot cake, it says, <laughs> wow, <laughs> carrot cake. Right, the only time anybody should ever say, <laughs> wow, carrot cake, is if you make carrot cake accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> I <was> like, what? <laughs> I was trying to mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> it's carrot cake. <laughs> wow. It's a delicious mistake. <laughs> I'm an awkward person. I am, you guys. I'm the worst at initiating a handshake. I'm the worst at it. I mess it up every time. I never know which way I'm going to mess it up next time, right? Like recently, I was at a restaurant, and I saw someone that I knew there, and I wanted to greet him, except he was the opposite end of the room, right? So immediately, I just start, like, walking over towards him. Right? But see, as soon as I start walking, that's when he saw me and our eyes met, right? And I freaked out. <laughs> right? That's when I, <laughs> like, I pulled my hand out, like, <laughs> way too soon. Like, I had a long way to go. <laughs> it was about half right there, I realized that if you pull your hand out too soon, you, you kind of just have to keep it out there. <laughs> you got to just pretend like this is not weird to me. <laughs> this is how I do it. Right. And the worst part was there was like one moment during the long walk when for some reason I thought it would alleviate some of the tension if I said, here I come. <laughs> I was like, you're going to get this. <laughs> it's coming for you. <laughs> you pull yours out too. <laughs> hey, you guys, it's been a lot of fun. I'm Isaac Whitney. Thanks a lot. Bye. Well. I want to tell you that we have one, one last comedian to share with you, and I want to tell you that standing in the wings and, and watching from there, that every single comedian has come off stage and said, boy, those people are incredible. Best audience Thou Shalt Laugh has ever had. So thank you so much for that. It's awesome. It's awesome. This, uh, this next comedian, has we've become friends in just in the last uh, 36 hours. Uh, he's a, an amazingly funny guy, uh, a great friend already, and he's also a great dad. Please welcome Taylor Mason. Hey! Oh, this is great. Man, oh man, Corpus Christi during the Humidity Festival, yes! Yeah, baby! Fish are just flying down the street. Oh, wait, we are family, you guys. We are family. This is a family. We are inclusive, and I want to get to know you guys. You are as much a part of this program as anybody, so I want you guys to be part of this this way. Um, I'm going to ask basic questions. Anybody can answer these. It's very simple. Answer with applause. It's very easy. These are not hard questions. If you're the oldest sibling in your family, applaud. If you're the oldest sibling, applaud, please. There they are. 
you have to coax it out of them. They were born first, you know, so they're real comfortable with where they are in life. You know, they were born first, they're good with that. Now listen to the tone and the vibe and the difference. Youngest, may I listen to you, please? He's a 70-year-old man. I'm the baby. Here I am. Still in diapers. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't know. Depends. <laughs> See, we're inclusive. That's what we do. We include everybody. We are a family. It's a family of man. Uh, oldest, youngest. I'm leaving out only children. We're the only children. Yeah, that's arrogance right there. Yeah, mom and dad had me and stopped with perfection. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they just said, we're not doing that again. <laughs> That's it, boy. Oldest, youngest, only children. That's it. All right. <laughs> Who? Oh, middle, middle children. I don't ask. No one cares. Why would I bring everybody down? It's a comedy show. Everybody's having a good time. Nobody wants a middle kid around. <laughs> That's not fair. Middle kids, stick up for yourselves. Yeah, girl. Yeah, you've been hurt. I know. I brought some toys with me. Come on out here, man. It's OK. It's OK. Um, I'm very proud of this guy. Come on out. It's OK. It's OK. This is my um, pig. Um, his uh, name is Paco. He's a Mexican pig. Paco? Mm -hmm. Paco? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, not my mascara. What? Achoo. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, it's okay, it's okay. You feeling all right? I think so. Okay. Nobody wants to get sick. Yes, I know. I see you were wearing your mask. You should wear a mask. So I don't get sick? No. You should just wear a mask. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Tell everybody, how, uh, from a pig's point of view, how do you not get sick? Wash your hands. Oh, that's a good, you more than anyone. <laughs> Why? Look where you put them. <laughs> oh, stop it. Is it a good crowd? Yes, it is a wonderful crowd. So, well, thank you very much for, for sharing all that with us. You know, they, a lot of people, what they did was with swine flu, they actually uh, changed the name of it. Why? People had stopped eating pork. Thank you, God. <laughs> this is a good thing. All right, whatever. They changed it to H1N1, and then people weren't scared of pork anymore, and they went back to eating it. Right, Paco? Paco? Paco, my name is H1N1. Oh! <laughs> Who's responsible for spreading the swine flu, in your opinion? Joe Biden. He can't keep his mouth shut. Oh, stop it! No! <laughs> oh, stop. Now, I know that your father's a football. See? What does your mother do? She is a dank. <laughs> your mother is a bank? She is the last bank left in the United States of America. No, no, no. There are lots of banks left. Not with money. Oh, Paco! <laughs> I used to do my entire act with Paco, and then I sell the pigs. I sell the pigs after the show. Um, one time, though, 
this is wild. I had a guy buy a pig from me, and he left, and in 30 minutes he came back and he said, mine doesn't work. <laughs> you sold me a mute pig. <laughs> he just sits there and stares at me, man. And I had to explain to the guy, I mean, even children understand this, I make the pig talk. You do? Yes, it's called ventriloquism, and you can do it? Yeah, I've been doing it so long, I don't even know sometimes when I'm doing it. Do it right now, I just did. The hard letters to say are B, F, M, V, P, and W, because you have to say those letters without moving your lips. That's impossible. No, you can do it. Really? Yep, really? Yep. Say Peter, Peter. Say Peter Piper. Peter Piper. Good. Say Peter Piper was a pig. No, no, no. Peter Piper was not a pig, he was a piper. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you do that? I just did. When? Right there. I've been doing it so long, I don't even know where the line between Paco and myself ends or begins. Do it again. I just did. Really? Yep. You're making me talk? Yep. Do it again. I just did. When? Right there. Do it again. I just did. When? Right there. <laughs> it's okay. Don't freak out. Are you sure you can do this? Yes. I'm going to watch. All right. Do it. I just did. One right there. Do it again. I just did. One right there. Do it again. I just did. One right there. Do it again. I just did. One right there. You are freaking me out. Okay. All right. It's <laughs> you are a psycho. No, I'm not. I'm going to put you back in the bag. No. Yeah. No. I do not want to go in here. No. Tell the lady in the second row to come in here. No. <laughs> This is my buddy, Romeo. What's up, girl? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Do you know where we are? Texas, man. Okay. Don't ask a guy who drives a tickle if it's a hybrid. All right. He will hit you. Okay. <laughs> Leave her alone. Mm -hmm. All right, Romeo. That's not what tonight is about. No? No, these are wonderful people. She is looking at me. All right, Romeo. <laughs> do you know where we are? We're in a cool church. We are. What do you say to somebody when you first meet them? What's up? Oh, stop it. <laughs> She's a pretty girl. What do you say? Girl, I'm the youth pastor. <laughs> Come on, man. You just sit there, you're mean, you're fine. I was contacted by my, the university I graduated from, I went to graduate school at Northwestern, they contacted me just a few weeks ago and asked if I could use a personal assistant. I said, oh, I don't really know. You know, I don't really have the money to afford him. They said, no, no, he'll work for free. So uh, I said, yeah, I, I'll work with an assistant. And I actually ended up hiring this guy to work for me. Come on out here, Timmy. Come on out. Oh, I got you. This is, uh, this is my buddy, Timmy. He's my personal assistant. You okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whoa. All right. I got to Twitter this. Okay. All right. Okay. You're Twittering right now? Yeah. What? I'm on stage, and they're looking at me. Okay. <laughs> Romeo, come here. Who is this? His name is Timmy. He's weird. No, he's not. He's going to help us out. This dude is weird. I'm going to Twitter that. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you can use this thing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What was your major at Northwestern? I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, mm, what, uh, communications. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, all right. The whole country's messed up. It's all right, it's all right. And you can help me make money with that? Sure. Really? Yeah. We'll send a letter to your parents. No, no, no. I don't want my parents. No, this will work. No, I don't want my parents involved. Watch. Do it, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Dear Mr. and Mrs. Mason, we have taken your son hostage. <laughs> Put $50 in his checking account or you'll never see him again. $50, were you a middle kid? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I don't really need a personal assistant. No? No, I, I really don't. No kidding, man, you got me. Wait, 
Everyone in Hollywood has an assistant. I don't live in Hollywood. Where do you live? New Jersey. I'll be your bodyguard. <laughs> really? You'd be my bodyguard? I'd take a bullet for you. Really, you'd take a bullet for me? Taylor, he's made out of foam. <laughs> Duh! Okay, all right. I'm gonna Twitter that. All right, all right, all right. What is Twitter? He's talking to all these people online. It's like having a million imaginary friends. You know all about that, dude. Okay. <laughs> so you want to be just like me? I want to be a ventriloquist. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Really? Hey, try to talk without moving your lips. I need to talk that. Use Romeo. Shut up, man. Face forward, let him try to throw his voice. This is disgusting. Go ahead, buddy, throw your voice. Hello, my name is Romeo. No, you have to do it without moving your lips. What? Without moving your lips. Hello, my name is Romeo. Oh, that is weird. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I can fly! It's all right. I can fly! Here. Back in the back. Girl, come on in here! <laughs> no, you, come in here! <laughs> I'm a youth pastor! <laughs> The young single man, Christian pickup song. Saw her at a singles night. She was standing with a bunch of men. She said, Can any of you boys prove that you're Christian? I said, Excuse me, nice to meet you. I will take first dibs. I couldn't help but notice you got one of my ribs. driven my purpose is you your proverbs 31 i'm proverbs 32 she said can you speak in tongues i said that's not my cup of tea i only use mine when i'm k-i-s-s-i-n-g <laughs> Trust me, it's prophecy like the Song of Solomon. Can I sell you an indulgence? To look that good must be a son. Motivation, inspiration, girl, can't you see? I'm gonna pop the question. I'm gonna pop the question. I'm gonna pop the question, girl. Would you start a Bible study with me? Grandma taught me how to play the piano. She's a stride piano player. If you can play like this, you'll be the hit of every party. I got hit at every party. <laughs> Tonight is a big night, um, not just because it's a wonderful audience, and this is Thou Shalt Laugh for, and I've been honored to be all part, part of all four of Thou Shalt Laugh, but there's a guy here working tonight that I've admired for many, many years, not just as a as, as, as an incredible talent, a radio host, a man who uh, bridges everything, race, religion, background, color, and brings people together, but he's also a very talented musician. And I, I, wrote, a, I wrote an overture called the Tesh Mason Overture. <laughs> I'm serious about this, and I was hoping, do you think it'd be okay if I asked John to come back out here and... and... John, I, I know, I'm putting you on the spot. I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, buddy, but um, if you take a look, I've got like, a, well, it's three pages. 
and uh, this is the, the Tesh Mason Overture. Okay. It's, it's, there's nothing really hard here. We're in the key C. It's a lot of notes there. It is a lot of notes. <laughs> But uh, you know, you'll be able to, you, it's just sight reading. Okay. You'll just kind of follow me. So just a duet? Just a duet. Okay. It's right. very simple. You'll know when to come in. Okay? okay? Yeah, All right, bud. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. <coughs> Let's bring all the comedians out. Come on out, guys.